hello everyone so today in this uh, video we'll be starting with a new session uh, that is i'll be covering some of the data science interview questions that is most widely asked uh, in any of the data science roles or whether it be uh, deep learning or machine learning engineering roles so this will be the most common type of questions that will be asked so uh, before that uh, if you like to have this slides or if you want to download the slides to your machine uh, then i'll host my uh, github link here so you can go there and uh, have a look at different projects that has been uh, covered and also other different modes uh, for machine learning and some other topics and also some of the projects that i've seen you can have an overview at this particular uh, github link so let's start so first question is uh, about explain overfitting and give examples in different models. So this is, uh, I mean, this is very common question that is uh, asked in all of the interviews. So, but uh, people usually give a kind of uh, explanation that uh, overfitting happens when your uh, training error is less and the test error is very high. So that is the common type of uh, definition that they give for overfitting but you should give a more constructive answer to the interviewer so what you should say is like uh, so given a hypothesis space h uh, hypothesis small h from this particular hypothesis space is said to overfit the training data if there exist uh, some alternative hypothesis h prime and then you compare this h taken previously and this h prime and if h has a smaller error than h prime over the entire training samples but this h prime has a smaller error than the overall entire distribution of instances so this is a very well formulated or a formal answer for overfitting so what this means basically is that you can consider any hypothesis as your machine learning model. Say you have randomly chosen one hypothesis. That may turn out to be simpler model or complex model, you don't know. But you take another model out of that, from that uh, hypothesis space, and you compare these two. And if the previously taken hypothesis or previously taken model has lower error than this alternative one, but this alternative has the overall generalization error reduced for the entire distribution of instances then that is overfitting and uh, to give examples uh, overfitting in linear regression is due to the presence of large number of coefficients or irrelevant features that you have so usually you have to apply certain feature engineering techniques like feature selection uh, like you can uh, use the nmi mutual information or there are chi squared filters you can uh, use that and you can remove which of the features are not uh, relevant to your model else it may impact the predictive performance of your underlying classifier or whatever it be uh, so uh, you can go for higher degree polynomial but it will lead to uh, misleading r value so if you know if you want to estimate the accuracy or if you want to know how good your linear regression has performed you basically use something called as r square and then in order to uh, mitigate the issues uh, with r square you use adjusted r square but with the problem of uh, this higher degree polynomials is that uh, errors are also reduced but uh, the thing is the complexity increases say like for one degree polynomial say if you have y is equal to mx plus c so the order is just one but if you go to a uh, squared that is uh, m1 x1 plus m2 x2 square it is okay but then if you go to uh, x cube or x4 or x5 that is for higher degree polynomials your curve would be fitting for all the data points but the complexity to calculate them and then to estimate the coefficients out of that would be very difficult so uh, that is one issue with that and uh, talking about uh, the decision trees it is due to the presence of large number of nodes that are present so if you have a very uh, tree which looks very clumsy and if the uh, 
tree has grown many branches or if the tree size is very huge or if it has reached the maximum depth or if there are many number of splits irrelevant splits it may be just for only binary split but uh, you just split it for multi way like three way or four way splits that is a clear indication that you need not do that many splits so that is one reason for overfitting in decision tree or you can estimate just by eyeballing how that overfitting is present uh, when you talk about neural networks it is due to the large number of hidden layers that are present if you add many hidden layers or many redundant layers in between those layers will have different nodes and thereby this uh, nodes will have different connections to the other layer that is the the next layer that is if you have in a feed forward neural network uh, layer at n minus 1 will have layer at the nth layer so there are uh, many connections and intermediate uh, uh, values or information that is passing so that will cause a, a huge uh, reason to overfit your training data and thereby you will have some weights which definitely you have to optimize by using gradient descent or back propagation algorithm in order to stabilize those values which you initially assign it randomly so these are the common uh, examples of overfitting and how it looks like and uh, what are the reasons or the what are the different culprits for overfitting in different models so uh, if you look at this diagram so this is uh, most commonly seen in many of the blogs or in many of the websites so this basically demonstrates uh, the model complexity that you have or you have built if you have not followed any assumptions or if you have randomly built your model and how the error rate will shift accordingly so on to the left hand side what you can see is that uh, on the red box uh, the model has high bias and low variance so i'll make a video separately on uh, or interview questions based on bias and variance so at the moment if uh, if your model has very high bias now bias is majorly due to the number of assumptions that you make usually linear models uh, will have very high bias so all linear models fit under this category and they have very low variance so uh, there in that uh, area you will have something called as underfitting so this is the diagram and uh, if you look on to the uh, right hand side that is you have low bias but you have very high variance so that's where the overfitting uh, is there so there what you have is the training error is low but the test error will just shoot up so that is the generalization error so you have to look whether your generalization performance of your model is reduced or not so in the formal definition that i gave so there i said like you have to find that alternative hypothesis which will minimize the error throughout the entire distribution of your instances then if you choose that particular model then you will not have the problem of overfitting uh, but uh, the thing is like what you want to obtain or you want to achieve ideally is a moderate bias and moderate variance or a low bias low variance but you cannot minimize them because without which you, you cannot generate your model so you have to keep them as minimal as possible so that is the most generalizable model that you can have uh, technical jargon in machine learning this is called as sweet spot so you have to attain this sweet spot in order to have most generalizable machine learning models so going about the next that is uh, difference between what is mean absolute error and mean squared error so usually uh, we have seen mean squared errors that is MSE so MSE is uh, used in gradient descent for doing the optimization or estimating the parameters and also uh, if you have uh, say uh, for k means clustering algorithms uh, when you try to uh, bring the data points closer to the uh, centroid or to the seeds where to converge you mainly use this mean squared errors but uh, there is a difference between these two and why these two different uh, errors are there and when to use what so that is the uh, difference or 
need to understand that so uh, first of all that the mean absolute error or the l1 loss uh, it overshoots the error uh, but they are more robust to outliers uh, but since its derivatives are not continuous uh, meaning like you calculate their mod value so you don't have any square term in that so which makes it very inefficient to find the solution so you cannot find the minimum and therefore you cannot differentiate so it's not differentiable in short so uh, you calculate the absolute differences between the target value and the predicted value so just by this what you obtain is in that mod uh, you don't have any positive or negative just you'll get the magnitude of the errors as set of predictors you'll get a list of uh, different values like at different iterations how many uh, values you have or when it converges or when you have different number of nodes that is increased uh, what are the different uh, values it can get so that is just a magnitude without considering any direction but if you consider the directions with it then that is called as a mean bias error so that can uh, have a range from 0 to infinity 0 being the least and infinity being the uh, max or the worst so you will try to keep uh, or to reach 0 as much as possible so we try to minimize them so mean bias is an extra information so MBE is a variation of MAE when we talk about MSE, uh, it captures the similarities in the data. So you have both the bias as well as the variance uh, in the model. So it will essentially help to estimate those things. Or you can also call as the L2 loss. Sometimes called as the quadratic loss because you have a square term in that. So they are sensitive to outliers. Uh, but MA is not. Uh, in this case, you can use any other loss function like hinge loss hinge loss say uh, it is used in svm support vector machine or you can go for something called as quantile loss as well so uh, by mse what you can achieve is like it will give a more stable and closed form of the solution by setting its derivative to zero and you can watch my gradient descent video to understand like how we estimate the different coefficients as well as the intercept uh, in order to uh, calculate that and then you doing different iterations uh, to uh, converge to one particular value and you say okay this is the value or the parameter value that i need to tune in order to get the best optimal parameters but what kind of question does msc answers is like how accurately we have estimated the parameters of that curve so that is very essential because if you don't estimate the parameters by having certain hyperparameter tuning or uh, any techniques like that then definitely uh, your model will perform poorly and you will have no idea of why or by what reasons uh, you need to tune those things so essentially you need to uh, do hyperparameter tuning in this case but that is a different question uh, or a different separate uh, question in fact but if we have these two uh, errors in the literature then when to use which one so if the outliers represent anomalies so uh, that are important for business or if you are doing some financial modeling or some financial estimation or uh, in medical domain also if you are encountering some anomalies which are not uh, rarely seen okay so if you are getting some kind of data like that and it should be detected it should not be gone unseen then we should definitely use MSE because outliers definitely affect the MSE and if you are not getting that estimated value for MSE then definitely there is something that is going on behind the hood so you need to have MSE in that case if you want to estimate the outliers in the data if in the other hand uh, if you believe that these outliers just represent some random uh deviations in the data or they just represent some fluke values or some corrupted data then we should choose for ma as a loss function so uh, if you don't know what outlier is outlier a simple definition is that something that does not belongs to your range of data points simple example is like if we take the salaries of uh, each of us or most common people then our salaries would have a definite range 
and suddenly if i invite mark zuckerberg or elon musk or jeff bezos and if i uh, compare their salaries with the common people salaries then definitely they uh, have a very large shift from this particular population so obviously there you can just by i estimate uh, you can have an idea of which points are outliers or you can basically cluster them so those are basically outlier so well that was uh, two questions for this interview series hope you enjoyed this and uh, do like share and if you are new to the channel please subscribe